Juanjo, because uh, my, my first language is Catalan and they say Juanjo. There's no problem in it. Okay, uh, Juanjo or Juanjo. Um, That's okay, both. Sure. Um, congratulations on your first Oscar nomination for the short Thank film Time Code. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you got the news and, and how it felt to uh, learn you were an Oscar nominee. I was in a bar in, in Barcelona sharing the moment with uh, part of the team and my family. That was really uh, great because normally when you get an award or a good uh, news about the, the, the short, uh, I, I am alone or, or with the producer, but that time I was uh, surrounded by, by people and that was a very special moment. So when we read time code in the list, it was like a, an explosion, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, congratulations again. Um, tell us a little bit about the film. What is it about? It's a simple story. It's uh, the story of uh, two security guards uh, that work in a parking lot. It's a girl who works uh, by day and a guy who works by night. And, and they only share the 10, 15 seconds every day, the changing, changing of the turn. And uh, one day she discovers a secret that uh, he's keeping. And you must you must watch the shorts if you want if you want uh, to know more. <laughs> Our lips are sealed. Um, where did the idea for it come from? Uh, it's the mix of two ideas. It was a personal experience that I had when I was working uh, for a big company. Um, I studied economics and I worked for for a big company, and I had some free time during Fridays mainly, and I I took advantage to write some ideas and scripts uh, and a colleague of mine uh, discovered these writings and um, she used these writings not in a very polite way i, I must say uh, that was uh, one of the of the main ideas and the second one is uh, i wanted to to make something uh, make films about dance so i talked to my co-writer and uh, with these two ideas the, this uh, personal story and dancing, we start writing, and the final result is time code. In developing the story, uh, you've made several short films before. Can you talk? Is it a challenge to uh, compress an idea into fifteen minutes, or is it liberating in some way? Can you, can you talk about the challenges of developing the story? I've made uh, several features too: right. uh, fiction film and two documentaries. Uh, but uh, this is my, my ninth short film, so I discovered during all these years that uh, I feel very comfortable uh, working and uh, writing short films. It fits better maybe uh, the way I approach filmmaking, so uh, there's nothing wrong of uh, making a career making short films. I'm, I'm a, a defender of the short film uh, format. In fact, my next project is another short film, so I feel very comfortable. I, I don't feel pressure to explain a story in only 15 or 10 minutes even. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't want to make feature films again. I will try. But I feel a short filmmaker, mainly. Right. Well, I mean, it's just like with, uh, uh, you know, writing. You write novels, you write short stories. So, yeah, I mean, right. jumping back and forth between the two. Um, exactly. I'm, I'm a big fan of, for example, of um, Raymond Carver, for example, or Hemingway. Uh, Carver never wrote a novel, and he's considered a, one of the best writers in American history. So why you can you cannot make a career making only short films? I appreciate, for example, the work of Jay Rosenblatt, who makes documentaries and experimental films or archive footage, and and he's really. Uh, uh, a really great filmmaker with a making a, a feature film ever. Absolutely. Um, so uh, talk a bit about the casting of it. Um, it's really a two-hander. Um, talk about finding the right people for those two leads. I wanted to work with uh, professional dancers in the first place. Um, and I, I didn't get, I didn't, we didn't do a really an, a normal audition for the, for the characters. Um, I was uh, watching a Catalonian TV program uh, dedicated to, to emerging dancers and choreographers. 
And uh, the moment Lali Aguade appeared on the screen, I said to myself, okay, this is uh, Luna, the main character. And I contacted her. He, she said no <laughs> in the beginning. But after some conversation, I sent her some works of mine, previous works, and I tried to convince her. And finally, she said yes. And uh, also Nicola Riccini, who was uh, uh, his, uh, her partner in, in a show called Incognito. They are, they are uh, showing in Barcelona at that time. Uh, we start making some rehearsals, and, and that's all. Uh, I think uh, it was a risk because Lali hadn't any experience before uh, in, in film or, or theater, even uh, Nico, uh, neither. So, but uh, I was convinced that she, she could do it, and finally she, she all, not only in the, in the uh, dancing parts, but also in the normal acting parts, I think she's great. She can, she can make a career in filmmaking or in acting if she wanted to, but she's really a star. In, in choreographing and dancing. So uh, finally, I think everything went well, but uh, it was really, really a risk. Well, what is your approach when it comes to working with actors, uh, be they trained or untrained? Um, in my previous works, I, I usually work with non-actors. I, I have worked with actors, uh, professional actors, non-actors, children, animals, uh, family. Run the gauntlet of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ne never with uh, dancers before, but my approach is uh, you can do uh, a lot of work with them, even if uh, they are non-actors. Or uh, this time it was really easy because uh, dancers uh, are very disciplined persons. They they were in the set uh, one hour before the shooting. They were uh, communicating a lot with uh, with their bodies. Uh, I think it was very very easy. I was really surprised. It, went, it was my, my first time working with dancers, and I think uh, it was a really, really rewarding experience. But it depends on the project. For example, my, my previous project was uh, called Need Woods, another short film, and every actor there wa was a non-actor, even they, are, they were uh, bus drivers, uh, and uh, the experience was completely different to Time Code. But uh, anyway, uh, it depends on the project. Kind of. Right. The uh, setting uh, is very crucial to this film. I mean, it all basically takes place in this garage and, and little uh, areas around that. Where did you find that place? Yes, in the script, we, dis uh, we described uh, a gloomy and dirty parking lot. We wanted to, to shoot in a, in a dirty parking lot, but finally we achieved this one. Uh, free <laughs> no, money, no right. money involved but it was brand new in fact in the third floor where where everything is occurring my car was the first car entering that that part of the parking so it was so that changed that changed really our minds we we were talking with the dp with the director of photography and we changed the way the the, the way we, we were approaching the cinematography and finally, I think that we have a very special thing, more closer than a Kubrick film <laughs> or than the, the script that we have. But I learned uh, along the years that you must uh, take advantage of the situations. What, what was really a problem, uh, trying to fit uh, the script and the place, finally was an advantage. So you need to take advantage of things like that. Absolutely. And, and how many uh, days did you have to shoot this? Um... Only a weekend. A weekend? We, we started on, on Saturday early in the morning and we're finishing at 6 p.m. Sunday. We still had time to, to, to have some beers with the, with the crew. Well, that's good. <laughs> we're working on <laughs> there, is, there is one problem. After yeah. that, we, we took eight months of uh, post-production. So that, that was not so easy because every part of the CCTV cameras was rebuilt in post-production. There were no cameras at all in that part of the parking. Everything is mm -hmm. rearranged in order to, to get that feeling of CCTV security uh, system in, into the movie. So it was a complicated post-production, but not, not, not the shooting. Shooting that quickly, I mean, what does that give you creatively? 
the, the shooting was uh, very, very quick because of, mainly because of the dancers. We, we didn't uh, have any rehearsals because they, they knew exactly uh, all the movements. They were repeating uh, the, the routines that they had in Incognito, that was the show that I was talking about. We were only discussing the places and the integration between the places and the dancing. But it was really, really quick. Uh, all the dancing parts were, were done with a GoPro on the top of a stick. Uh, and uh, in two hours and a half, we get two hours of material ready for, for, for editing. So it was really, really, really quick. And the, and the normal acting parts were a bit more difficult. We, we shoot with a Red Dragon camera. It was a normal shooting, but I think that the, the acting, uh, both Lali and, and Nico were great in their parts. I think everything went complete, completely uh, right. Right. You mentioned there being a long post-production. I wonder, as you're editing it, as you were editing this film, did you find uh, nuances or new things that you didn't think about before as you were uh, as you were shooting it that maybe uh, sparked something or changed something for you? Yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, even and there is one scene that uh, wasn't on the on the script. The moment when they exchange uh, post-its that was invented during the the shooting, and that forces us to change something in in post production. The dates that they are appearing in the calendars are wrong because they are spent more days than the in the in the original script, and every moment in the dancing and the final and the final moments of the without spoiling anything uh, was done uh, working with the musician the composer and the the editor so everything was done in post productions and the post production and and uh, the final the final length of the of the short was 18 minutes and I cut three minutes in order to send the, the film to Cannes because the limit in Cannes for a, a short film is 15 minutes. So in the last day, I decided to cut three minutes. Uh, and these three minutes never came back to the, to the film. Well, that's good to know that um, there's a time limit. In case anybody is wondering, 15 minutes is all you get for Cannes. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, you have, you have my credits. Uh, my, my grades are really, really fast because yeah. they don't allow uh, uh, more than 15 minutes, including credits. So my credits are like like that. So uh, my mother, my mother was there, but uh, she cannot read her name, so it's incredible. So, but anyway, just uh, everything is uh, for a good reason. Absolutely, I didn't know that actually. That's that's really interesting. Um, now that this film is nominated for an Oscar, people are going to seek it out and see it. Uh, you know, every year they uh, release the uh, Oscar-nominated shorts into theaters. Um, what do you hope people take away from the movie when they see it? Uh, that's crazy because when normally short films are uh, only in the, cir in the film festival circuit, and uh, not a lot of people are accessing short films. I think it's a great opportunity for, for me and my, and my short film to access a, broad, a broader a audience. I don't know how to say. I, I think I'm not the right person to, to say to the people what they must, they must think after watching my film. I think they must discover. I think that my film has a lot of things. Uh, it's a mixing of genres. You, you can find comedy, you can find mystery, you can find romance, comedy, musical, only 15 minutes. So there are a lot of things to discover in my film. I, I hope they, they, they enjoy it. Well, congratulations again, and thank you so much for taking the time to thank chat. You. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one.